you could join me today. And as I was saying, we have some good stories about birds and nests, and we're going to see all kinds of birds. And I have some new stories for the library. Two of them we're going to read are new, new for us, but one is an old one. One that made me think, oh, I have to read a book about nesting. So maybe these are the kinds of nests that you have seen outside your window. Robins. This is about a robin's nest. And um, they're, the robins are out. They're a good sign of spring. So this is called Nesting, and it's by Henry Cole. And I really like this one because Henry Cole is the author, and he drew the pictures. And he did everything mostly with black and white and gray. So he just used pencil to draw, but he made his eggs stand out very blue. So I hope you like this one. I just think it's pretty and we learn a lot about what it takes to build a bird's nest. It's a lot of work for a mother and father bird. Nesting by Henry Cole. It's an early spring morning and the ground is covered with frost. From the branch of an apple tree, a robin starts to sing. You really have to study the pictures, don't you? His song tells other male robins, stay away. But a female hears his song too. And he sings, here I am. The two robins explore. One spot looks perfect. And together they gather dry grass and small twigs. So here, this is how it begins, just with a few, a few bits of grass and twigs. And they begin to build a nest. And you can see it's growing and getting bigger and rounder. It's amazing that a bird can build a nest like this. The nest is finished. It's perfect. It's just the right size and shape. And the mother robin settles into it and sits quietly. I wonder, I wonder how hard it is to just sit quietly in a nest like that and wait and wait and wait. She lays an egg. It's smooth and blue. She lays three more until four is perfect. And there she sits. She keeps the eggs warm. She is patient. Inside each egg, a baby bird is growing. The eggs begin to hatch one by one. The babies have no feathers and they are blind and defenseless. So these are the babies and they don't have, their eyes are closed, they can't see. And they don't have any feathers so they can't fly. And defenseless means that if something were to come, they wouldn't be able to protect themselves. They are very hungry. A juicy caterpillar is a perfect meal for baby robins. And so is a soft worm. Mmm, yum, 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 worms. You can really see them now. You can see their, their little eyes are just beginning to open, but they are hungry. One afternoon, a storm comes and the wind blows and rain pours, but the babies are kept safe and the storm passes. So the mother bird sits with them and she protects them from the wind and the rain. Day after day, the babies need more food. And the parents make many, many trips. So back and forth and back and forth. They bring worms and things to eat. Then they fly back and look for more. So those, 
those mother and father birds are so busy. They must be so tired at the end of their day. Down below, a snake sees the robin's nest. The snake is hungry too. And so he climbs the apple tree. See the snake? So he has to eat too, doesn't he? Remember, those little baby robins are defenseless. The robins fight back. They dive and swoop, and they make a lot of noise. They don't give up until they drive the snake away. Luckily, there he goes. He's off, and hopefully he won't be back. The young robins have grown bigger and bigger. Now they fill up the nest. And they also have feathers, just right for flying. One by one, they leave the nest. They flap and they flap and they drop to the ground below. Soon, they grow strong and they can feed themselves. Their wings take them anywhere they want to go. It's late summer now and the days are shorter. The robins eat berries and grow fat. Now they can survive a cold winter. Much bigger, aren't they? They look like adult birds. They gather to spend the winter months together. The old nest is now covered with snow and a new nest will take its place when spring comes. So isn't that interesting? So this just talks about the American robins, which we see, and you probably have seen those outside. They have that reddish orange belly, and they're kind of a, a gray, a gray brownish bird on with their, their top feathers. And it says they build nests in trees or shrubs or buildings or gutters or porches of houses. And it says that the female does most of the work. So the, the mother bird does most of the work. And then she lays the eggs, and it's common for them to lay four eggs. It takes about two weeks for those eggs to hatch. It's a long time to sit still on a nest, isn't it? Could you imagine sitting still for two weeks? And then we learn from our story the baby birds don't have any any feathers and they're blind. So they rely on the parents to take care of them until they're ready to fly. So I just think that's such a beautiful book. I hope you guys like that one and you learn something about those little birds that are nesting outside your, your houses. And now you'll be able to think a little bit more about what's happening and how hard it is for those birds to sit. So I have a fun little, um, Ryan, to do with you guys about, about fuzzy chicks and eggs. It goes like this. Five eggs and five eggs, and that makes ten. Sitting on top is a mother hen. Cluck, cluck, and crack, crack. And what do we see? Ten fuzzy chicks, as cute as can be. Cheep, 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 cheep. Should we try that one again? So we have our five, five and five is ten. So we have five eggs and five eggs, and that makes ten. Sitting on top is a mother hen. Cluck, cluck, and crack, crack. And what do we see? Ten fuzzy chicks, as cute as can be. Beep, 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 beep. All right, well, I have another uh, pretty story 
week and we'll learn a lot about different kinds of birds. Not all birds build the same kinds of nests. So this is going to show us all the many different kinds of nests that birds build. So I hope you like this one. It's called Mama Built a Little Nest. And this one is written by Jennifer Ward and Steve Jenkins drew the very colorful pictures. So this one's a lot different than the other one. This one has lots of color in it. Mama built a little nest. Maybe you've seen some of these birds outside your house. These are called woodpeckers. Mama built a little nest inside a sturdy trunk. She used her beak to tap, 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 the perfect place to bunk. So they, these, these birds build their nest inside the trunks of old trees. Our next one. Mama built a little nest, a cup so wee and snug, with walls of moss and roof of sky, and silky cobweb rug. Oh, okay, so this nest is made of spider webs. This is a hummingbird nest, and it says that they use the spider webs because the spider webs will stretch as the birds grow. So it starts out very snug and small, but spider webs are stretchy. How would you like to have a spider web nest? Harry. <laughs> Mama built a little nest. Well, actually, she didn't. She found one that another made, and then she laid me in it. So here we can see the, the blue eggs. What kind of bird do you think laid these blue eggs? Like robin. Maybe a robin, like we saw in our first story. Yeah. But then do you see this one here? It's all brown with spots, isn't it? So yeah. some other type of bird laid an egg in the robin's nest. And it says not all birds build nests. This is a cowbird. A cowbird left this egg in another bird's nest. So it looks like she's not going to have to sit on the nest. She doesn't like to sit a long time. So she's gonna leave it up. <laughs> she's gonna let it up to the robin. That was clever. Oh, I bet you know these birds, don't you? Hey, Karen. Penguin. Hey, Mama built a little nest. My daddy helped out too. They placed my egg upon his feet. And that's where I hatched and grew. Isn't that interesting? So his, his, his belly feathers keep the nest warm and it sets on his feet feet because they live in a cold place. So they don't have trees and, and, and sticks and things to build their nest. They have to use their own body heat to keep them warm. Here's our next bird. Mama scraped a simple nest upon a craggy ledge. She tucked me safe within her wigs until my time to fledge. So, ooh, that would be a, I bet they're up very high on a on a high cliff and a fledge means, I think that's when a baby bird is just about ready to fly. Ooh, ooh, I don't know. There's this one. Can you see, this is a plant called a cactus. This is in the desert and has lots of nests here. It says, daddy built a little nest and then he built another and another and another hoping to impress my mother. So this is a, uh, called a male cactus wren, and he builds lots of nests, thinking that maybe he'll attract a mother bird who will like the nest that he's built. So he's kind of a builder. <laughs> Mama built a little nest. She used her beak to sew, so sewing a woven nest of silky grass, the perfect place to grow. Wow, this is, this is made by a weaver bird. And look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's all wrapped carefully with grass. That's amazing. 
So birds are artists too, aren't they? Mm-hmm. Here's our next animal. Do you know what these are? Owls. Owls, right. These are owls that burrow in the ground. Mama built a little nest by digging out a burrow. It was a hoot, our little home, a safe and feathery furrow. I bet that's cozy. Oh, this is an interesting one too. You can see it here on the lake. Mama built a little nest. She gathered twigs that float and placed them on the water to create a cozy boat. Ooh, it's like a, a floating nest. Wouldn't that be nice? I bet you can feel the, the waves ripple at night and it's just a, a soothing way to be an egg waiting to hatch. It's, these are called grebes. Grebes create a floating nest. Interesting. Oh, here's another interesting way. This one is hard to spot the eggs, but maybe if you look carefully, you can see some. It says, Mama built a little nest. She made it on the ground. A simple nest, not very soft, with pebbles, smooth and round. So you can sort of see the eggs, but they look, a, maybe that's the egg. And these are the stone pebbles. So that wouldn't be a very comfortable, cozy nest, would it? But I guess it protects, mm -hmm. it protects the eggs. Now here's another one. Ooh, this is an interesting way to build a nest. Daddy built a little nest. Now, don't gross out with spit. Who would have thought that spit would make the perfect place to sit. So it's like a hard crusty material after it comes out of the bird's mouth and that forms the cup for the birds to, to rest in. This is called a swift, a swift or a swiftlet. So these are some kind of ocean bird. They build them high up on the cliffs. Here's our next bird. Mama built a seal's nest within an old tree's hollow. My daddy left a little hole to pass her food to swallow. Oh, isn't that neat? So the, the father bird brings food to the mother while she stays inside the nest. Now, this is a great big bird. I don't know if you guys know what that is. It's an eagle. The mama a bald eagle, yes. Mama built a sturdy nest by stacking twigs up high. A breezy house upon a tree where talons blend with skies. So these are big, big sticks because these are very big, big birds. You can see him carry that in his, it's almost like branches, they're so big. This is a pink bird a big pink bird called a flamingo. Mama built a little nest entirely out of mud. No feathery down, no soft green plants, just fuddy, muddy crud. How about that? Such a pretty pink bird builds its nest out of mud. Well, oh, you guys know these birds, don't you? Mm -hmm. Those are robins. That's what a robin looks like with that orange belly and black head and brownish gray wings. You have a nest, your very own, a place to rest your head with pillows soft and cozy thoughts. Your nest is called a bed. Yeah, so we sleep in a nest in a way too, right? Our nest is our home, and our bed is our nest. <laughs> well, I hope you guys liked that one we, and learned a little bit about the different kinds of nests that all these different birds build. It's interesting to think that not all, not all yeah. birds build the kind of nests that we think of with all the woven grasses and trees, isn't it? So I have another little rhyme for us to do. 
about birds. Okay, so we're going to get our birds ready. This one, we have a lot of different things to say. So this, we're going to start with Jack and Jill. So two little robins sitting on a hill. One named Jack, the other named Jill. Fly My away, name. Jack. Fly My away, name. Jill. Louie. Come back, Bye. Jack. Come Bye. back, Come Jill. Back. Come back. Now we're going to say Jill. two robins sitting on a cloud. One named Quiet, the yeah. other named yeah. Loud. Wow. Fly away, Quiet. Fly away. Fly away, loud. Come back, quiet. quiet. Come, Come back, back, loud. Okay, now we're going to say flying in the sky. Two little robins were flying in the sky. One named low, the other named high. Fly away, low. Fly away. Come back, low. Come back, low. All right. And now, now we have our two little robins that are going to sit on a pool. Okay. Two little robins sitting on a pole. One named fast, the other named slow. Fly away fast. Fly away slow. Come back fast. Come back, Come back slow. slow. Okay. Now we have two little robins driving in a car. Can you imagine? Two little robins driving in a car, one named near and one named far. Fly away, near. Fly away, far. Come back, near. Come back, far. Now we get together. Okay. Now, these are two little robins sitting on the ice. It's winter time. Two little robins were sitting on the ice. One named Mean, the other named Nice. Fly away, Fly. Mean. Fly away, Nice. Fly nice. Come back, Fly away, Pigeon. Come back, Nice. Come back, nice. <laughs> Come back Pigeon. All right. Now we have two little robins sitting on a gate. One named Wobbly, the other named Straight. Fly away, Wobbly. Fly away, Straight. Come okay. back, Wobbly. Come back, Straight. Come back, Straight. Mm -hmm. And now we have two little robins were sitting on a lily. One named Sirius. The other Fly away, Sirius. Fly away, Come back, Sirius. Come back, Sirius. And we have one more. Two little robins were, uh-oh. Two little robins were, why can I find that one? <laughs> oh, two little robins were sitting on a gate. One named Early, early. the other yeah. named Late. Fly away early. early. Fly away late. late. Come, Come back, back early. early. Come back late. Come back. <laughs> He's late. He's late. He's late, isn't he? Late. Yeah. Come back. It's time. Come back. Late. Come back. There he is. Yay. He made it. All right, well, I have one more little story. And I think you'll like this one too. This is a cute one that was new for the library too. And it's called Mel Fell by Corey Tabor. So I, this one is kind of a different kind of bird. And he leaves his nest, this is what happens. So if you notice, it's kind of interesting because when we open a book, we usually hold a book like this, don't we? We open it like this and we turn the pages this way, right? I should show you, we turn the pages like this. But in this story, the book goes this way and we're gonna open it 
take this. This is called Mel Fell. And here's our tree. Mel Fell. So here's a, looks like these birds have, a, have their nest tucked inside the trunk. We saw some birds and our mama built a little nest that lived that way, didn't we? One day, let's see if I can get this. I have to get back a little bit so you can see the story. One day, when Mama was away, Mel decided that it was time to learn to fly. She'd been in the nest long enough. Aren't you scared? asked her sister, Pim. Yes, said Mel, but I won't let that stop me. So she's going anyway, even though her, her sister is worried about her. Mel looked down. It sure was a long drop, said her brother Pip. Well, said Mel, I have wings. Mel was scared and it was a long drop, but today was the day that she would fly. So she's gonna do it. That is a long drop, isn't it? Wow, they're all looking down. <laughs> How would you like to be a baby bird getting ready to fly for your first time? Mm -hmm. That'd be scary, wouldn't it? Oh. Well, see you soon, she told her siblings, and she jumped. She flipped, she spread her wings, and then she fell. Woo, look at her go. You can tell she's going fast, isn't she? You can see those yeah. lines that show how fast she's going. Straight down. Oh. She went right past the owls. Mel fell and fell. There she goes. The squirrels tried to catch her. They really did. They'd grown quite fond of those squeaky little chirpers upstairs. But it was no use, and they missed her by a whisker. Oh, dear. Look at that. There she goes, right past them. said the bees, but they barely slowed her down either. We will save you. That's what that meant. We will save you. <laughs> they tried to hold on to her feet. I guess they're just not strong enough. Even the spider lent a hand. Well, actually, eight hands. We kept on going, but still Mel fell. Do not fear, helpless little bird. I will catch you. Oh, the snail. The snail tried to catch her, but you know, snails are slow, aren't they? And she fell and she fell. And here come the ants. And they're even trying to make a, an ant chain to reach out and grab her. The ladybug shouted, Oh no! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something bad's going to happen, I think. <gasps> Splash! Look at that. She landed in the lake. Can birds fly? Mel dived into the water. She snaps her beak and caught a fat little fish. See, it says turn the book. All right, I'm going to turn the book. As she kicked her legs. She wiggled her tail feathers. She spread her wings and then, and now it says this way. Okay, here goes. Here goes. This way. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, turn this way now. Okay. She flew. <gasps> Look at that. She left the water, she flew up in the air with a fish in her beak, right past the ladybug. Mel flew and flew. The ants are all running up the tree. The snail looks surprised. 
As Mel flew by, the spider clapped her hands, all eight of them. Yay! The bee said, huzzah, huzzah. They were so excited too. <laughs> the squirrels raced her to the top. Right past the owl family. There they go. <gasps> Mama was waiting when she got there. And Mel said, I flew, I flew. Oh, she yelled, I flew. She dropped the fish. And now the fish is shouting, I'm flying, I'm flying. Mama said, I knew you could do it. I knew you could. And Mel said, I knew I could do it too. And then there was a splash. And it said, do not fear helpless little fish. I will catch you. Oh, something tried to catch the fish, but I guess they missed. <laughs> And that was the end. <clears throat> and it just tells us at the back of the book that Mel is a kind of bird called a kingfisher. And kingfishers really do catch fish in the water by diving straight down through the water, through the branches of their trees and down into the water. So how about that? So Mel is a real bird. Did you like that one? <laughs> I like that one. I thought that was fun. And it had a happy ending. I always like stories that have happy endings. It's a good thing. Well, so now, guys, we're going to make a bird nest. So this is what we're going to make. This one. Okay, and you'll notice we have we have some robin's eggs in our nest, but we also have Another little kind of egg in here. Maybe you guys remember what kind of bird? A cowbird. A cowbird left its its egg behind. So let me just change things around and I'll show you how to make this. So for today's project, you'll need a paper plate. Okay. I'm gonna see what I have for this so you can see it the whole time. Yeah. No. Okay, you'll need a paper plate. Now I said in the directions you could also use brown paper, but if you have a paper bag, um, it works. It's really nice for tearing, and it yeah. um, sort of in, to imitate our grassy sticks that are going to be woven into our nest. So I'm going to just take my bag and tear it. So it's very fun to tear. So that's why if you have a lunch brown bag, that is a good, good thing to use for this project. But if not, you can use brown paper and just cut it into strips. Okay, but I have sort of like a rough, this, this has nice rough soft edges that make it look a little more like a bird nest. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just start tearing my my bag into strips. And it tears really straight. I'm not going to make mine a rough I'm going to make it a strip. I don't, I don't want mine not to be a robin's nest. Okay. And then I'm going to make those, you can keep them big if you want. They'll, they'll work fine. And you, you can just make them big and crisscross. I had split mine into smaller pieces, but I think I'll just start gluing, gluing it down. So, and you can put glue all over your plate and do it that way. But I think I like to sort of think about where I want to put my pieces. So I'm going to be like that mother, mother and father bird. And I'm just going to weave. I'm going to weave my my strips onto my onto my nest okay and it's okay if they turn up a little this one's sticking up a little high so maybe i'll put that somewhere else okay a little more glue there and you can go right across your brown paper 
and just keep laying, laying your, your nesting material onto your plate. Okay, it looks like I need a little more now. So I ran out, I just tore that piece off. That's okay, I'll just add it somewhere else. So I'm gonna just keep, keep adding and adding and adding till I fill that in. Maybe add a little more for you guys. Because you're probably working on yours at the same time. So I'll just keep tearing it as I need to. Adding. Whoops. So I want to make it look like a real bird's nest. The more you add, the better it will look. So it takes a lot of a lot of patience. Like our our pair, our family of birds, they needed a lot of patience, didn't they, to build their nest and to wait for their 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 um, baby babies to hatch, their chicks to hatch. Okay, I'll use this one yet. I think I'm almost I'm almost ready to do the next part of my project. But I think, you know, if you want to make yours look really good, you can add a lot more. I'm going to, I'm going to stop here because I want to show you the next step. Okay, so I've got my, my plate filled in with nesting material. And then I don't know if you saw that, but I also suggested you go outside and grab some, some dried grass just to give it a little bit more of a, a natural, realistic look. And I'm going to use my, my liquidy glue to attach the, the sticks, if I can get my lid off. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna add some sticks. I'm gonna just make a little line and lay a little stick in there. Now that'll take some time to dry. And you can just crisscross them any way you like. Grass will work nice too if you have just have some grass outside. Okay, just give it a little bit more of a variety of of materials because I think that's what birds do. They use whatever they can find. Okay, so we we can see how hard it must be to make a nest, can't we? Now. I'm ready to add my eggs. So I'm going to, I have some blue paper for my eggs because I wanted to make it like the, the robin's eggs. And I'm going, I'll use a marker to draw my, my egg shape so you can see it. So I'm going to make the shape of an oval. It's kind of a long shaped circle, isn't it? And if you fold your paper in half, you can cut two at a time. So that's what I did. I folded my paper in half and I'm, I'm going to cut out two at a time. So I'll figure out where I want to lay my eggs in my nest out two more. So I'll have four because we learned that robins usually lay four eggs. So there's my four eggs. I'm going to lay those in my on my nest. They came first. Well, I can use glue stick for that. Just have to be careful when you're putting your glue stick on that you don't tear up your brown your brown nesting material. So I'll lay one in there, and then I'll tuck another one. I'm gonna put another one right over the top of it. It's okay if they overlap. Okay, there's another one. And I'll put one more in here. 
Okay, so I have my four eggs. And now I'm going to put that sneaky little cowbird egg in. And that, that if you have some bre extra brown paper left over, you can cut another egg shape out. So that's what I will do. And that egg that we saw in the story, he kind of had some speckles on it. So I'm going to put some speckles on my, on my egg. But it's okay. I'm just using my blue marker for that. And then I'm going to add that one to the nest. So now when the mother bird comes back, She's going to say, now, how did that egg get in my nest? And I'm just going to tuck it in there in between some, the other eggs. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can just let your, your, uh, your nest set just like this. Or if you want to hang it up, I thought of a way you could do that is to take some yarn and I'm going to put two holes in my, on my nesting plate, one on one side, and then one on the opposite side. And I'm just going to tie my yarn. I'm going to push it through the hole and tie it. And then, I made mine kind of long. You don't have to make it as long as I did. Maybe I'll just pull this through and I'll shorten it up a little. Depends where you want to hang it. Maybe you need to hang it from somewhere high. Okay. And then I'll just snip that long end off. And now, there it is. There it is. Okay, and then you can hang it somewhere and put it put it by a window. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our stories about bird nests today and learned some new facts. And we'll be looking out your windows for some robins. Bye, bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you.